This is our first time at the San Diego Asian Film Festival, and spoiler alert, we love it. Yeah. What if- <laughs> Yeah, it's my first time here as well, and spoiler alert, I also love it too, yeah. (laughs) Our film is also rooted in two women of color uh, studying to be nurses at university, so I was really, really looking forward to seeing Nurse nurse Unseen, and it really did not disappoint. Like, there's so many crossovers thematically with our film. I got to meet uh, Michelle and talk to her about her experiences, and we were planning to stay in touch, so yeah, it it was a really great screening. So really, the balance of real life Esther story and my story is, you know, I did get a chance to speak with Esther and uh, find out about her experiences, what it was like in that time in Canada when she immigrated and lived there. And, you know, just hearing about those, her story and, you know, the things that she passed through, the things that she saw, you know, things like that. And, and then kind of merging it with my experiences as well as someone who also immigrated from Nigeria, but maybe at a different year, so 2009. So, you know, there are really some parallels to our experiences, you know, being that we're both Nigerian and just finding the common ground between that, you know, like we did share some of those common experiences. So I think I just had to, you know, stay true to uh, the interpretation of that as well as, you know, bringing the truth of my experiences as well and just to deliver something that felt real and felt um, very, you know, concrete and, you know, it was, it was, it was, it was really good doing that. It, was, it felt really good. It was a great journey, yeah. Again, in keeping with, I feel like a lot of times characters of color are squashed into one dimension when they are, you know, at the side of the narrative and, and it was really interesting uh, creatively for me as the writer to see how, how can we give both of these women lead characters equal multi-dimensions and I think the phone call was really critical into seeing um, the dynamic with their families so myself being half Chinese and and often being raised in an environment where we don't express our feelings or we don't express affection or you know the the phone call you know I sort of laughed about it but like I know my mom my mom grew up very poor in Singapore and they would be like why are you wasting money on this phone call like literally why are you wasting money on this phone call and so like that was kind of where it came from Um, and, and and really that, you know, if there's an essential urgent thing, like, you could call, but this, you know, you can see Sai really struggling against, like, her own feelings of loneliness and isolation and, and wanting that verbal affirmation and wanting that comfort, but not being able to find it, um, which I think further exacerbates how she's feeling in that moment. Um, but with Esther coming from, like, more of, like, an expressive, loving family and, and you know, in talking with real-life Esther about her own father and what he would say to her like we really showed that Esther had that warmth but it almost made it worse for her because like hearing like I love you I'm proud of you was like oh my gosh I miss my family so much and I'm far from the people that love me and root me and ground me so I think it was really both ways was like kind of emotionally painful but we were able to show how the characters uh, have a different relationship with their families. It was really interesting for me I mean my mom passed away five years ago and a lot of this this work I mean my transition into becoming an actor and a filmmaker has really been since her passing and a lot of my work is really rooted in grief and honoring her memory and also like the collective memory of immigrant women who came to Canada or North America at that time and so I think no Knowing her only as her daughter, I only see a certain side of her. So I interviewed all of her sisters um, and a lot of her friends, and I did a lot of research about Singapore at the time, like when she, from when she was born to when she left. Um, and through that, I was able to find out crazy stuff. Like she liked basketball. I had no idea. <laughs> like she was really into playing basketball in Singapore. Um, And yeah, like, even though she was like, in a lot of ways, very stoic and very um, serious, she also had a playful side. So I think I really rooted in a lot of research. I think it can be easy as an actor to be so, get carried away with, oh my gosh, like, what am I, what do I show, what do I not show? But I think rooting it in a lot of research, even though it's very meta, but it's like based on a true story, but a fictionalized narrative. But like, as an actor, you have to come back to that research and like how you're grounding that story in, in reality. So I think that's how I approached it, like talking to people that knew her when she was younger and as friends so that I wasn't stuck in that like mother-daughter dynamic of how I perceived her. Working on set with Rosie, it was, you know, such an amazing experience. You know, I met Rosie uh, during the callback for Esther and Sai and 
you know, she was just so kind. And oh, this was over Zoom, by the way. Yeah, it was over like, Zoom. Yeah. yeah. February, February, yeah, 2021. yeah. February 2021, yeah. 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 And then we had um, costume sessions, you know, phone calls in between. Yeah. She was really, really helpful. Like, by the way, like, meet Esther. You can ask her whatever questions you like. And then when we got to filming, um, yeah, it was, it was amazing. Like, Rosie's really transparent. She's really supportive. And we, we shared some laughs in between, like, <laughs> our serious moments. You know, yeah. we want to be, like, tapped in and focused in the role. Um, but we did have moments where we, like, laughed a lot. It was mostly that scene, you know, at the end when we're, you know, yeah. meeting each other. <laughs> also, when she asked the grocer for the rice, like, it just became this meme of, like, where can I find your rice? <laughs> like, it's just amongst, like, yeah. other crew. Yeah, and other yeah. casts like I think yeah. in a lot of ways like it's such a deeply racist moment yeah. what happens to Esther but like in a lot of ways I think many communities of color are like well we gotta laugh together about this stuff yeah. It, was, yeah. it was all about the rice in that moment <laughs> um, but yeah the, the last scene in the in the film where we meet in the nursing class I think we did that a few times mm -hmm. and then every time we'd look across from each other and we're like okay like one two three okay go and then we're walking up and then we look at each other and then, you know that smile was real for me yeah. because you know doing that over and over again like it was it was an amazing experience and mm -hmm. part of me felt like such joy to be smiling at you know Sai like joy as Esther and then joy as me Ivana you know sharing this experience with Rosie mm -hmm. who I've just felt so much support and you know kindness from like all all throughout this journey yeah um, I'll just add a bit about the food scene the the credit scene so I what it, a lot of it was very real because I was learning about agusi yeah, soup. Yeah, I was like improv, by the yeah, and that the last scene was improvised, yeah. um, and it was funny because at first like we were whispering, and then my <laughs> co-director was like, "Why are you whispering?" Um, so we bumped up the volume, but uh, yeah, I was actually talking like teaching her about chao guo tiao which is you know a singaporean dish a yeah. noodle dish it's one my mom loves to make it's one i love to make and i was learning about a goosey soup so yeah. it was a very educational process for both of us i think mm -hmm. just mm -hmm. being lovers of food and you know we went down to pacific beach today we got some tacos we're excited about all the food we get to eat here in san diego um so a lot of that i think was like shared love of, of food and yeah. and wanting to express that love to your friend um through food uh, we, I, I, I started writing and I applied for the grant that we received through Art with Impacts, Voices with Impacts program um, in, nearing, in the fall of 2020. So we'd been living through like the very extreme beginning of the pandemic, George Floyd's murder, uh, the resurgence uh, into the public eye of, of the Black Lives Matter movement that had been ongoing for many years by that point, um, and also a lot of, uh, you know, violent attacks against Asians, Asian elders. So I was really just already kind of ruminating on the, the distinct differences, and I talked about this in the Q&A, but the distinct differences between um, the Asian experience and the Black experience in North America. And I'd been doing a lot of my own self-education and unlearning on white supremacy, colonialism, and how it divides us, and how a lot of the things and the way we perceive one another as communities of color is rooted in a lot of these white supremacist beliefs. So I was really just thinking about, okay, how can I honor that? Because in my own life, you know, I always, my Auntie Esther was always present from the time I was young I saw this friendship between my mom and Esther so I wanted to honor both um, their solidarity but also seeing how like the grocer is willing to talk to Sai but he's not even willing to talk to Esther and I think you know that could be true of um, you know to an Asian person and a black person in a grocery store maybe not always but sometimes so I think it's really important that we talk about how we can bond together and support one another and also just like with honesty and tenderness talk about how we're not supporting one another and how we can improve and move forward on that um, because there is a lot of colorism in the Asian community like many Asians are familiar with skin whitening creams are being are familiar with being told don't tan you know don't get darker skin like that when I lived in China that was definitely the case so I think it's really on us to kind of do that work together and support one another yeah. Yeah, that was, that was really beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I think it's really important to show these kind of relationships between uh, other people of color because, you know, for me growing up, I I was someone who was very privileged to be to know about different cultures, and I've always been someone who is open, and I really want to get to know so many other people. So for me, I was able to have 
our conversations and get to know people from different walks of life, different ethnicities, you know, different races. So um, having that experience in Esther and Sai, especially a story between uh, someone of African descent and an Asian person, it's not something that, you know, we might see a lot in, in TV, but it's so real because, you know, they were friends for four decades mm-hmm. and their friendship started in the, in the 70s. So. So these people are out there, you know. They they <laughs> they are they're, out there. They're, they're out there, and you know they these they are like French. They have you know these friendships are like family to them. Yeah. And you know these experiences are out there. We just have to tell the stories, mm-hmm. and it's it's really really important because that's the way we can also educate each other about our similarities, maybe in you know in like the pitfalls of white supremacy, and also in our differences because sometimes our experiences are not the same especially how it is and when you're interacting with other communities you know so it's really important to tell those kind of stories at the end of the day just being kind to one another is just what's the most important thing yeah and acknowledging who the other person is no matter what they look like it's really by acknowledging their differences do you really see them and also like honor them so I think that's why it's really really important to tell these kind of stories I immigrated to North America in like 2007? 2007? Yeah, 2007, yeah. Um, I was, you know, I did, I stayed in the States for a little bit and then I came to Canada. Um, and it was kind of interesting getting around and fitting in. Uh, fitting in because you can't really fit in when, you know, you're, yeah, when you're a visible, you know, person of color and yeah so it was it was a really interesting experience because I just felt so sometimes I felt out of place and I found that I began to draw towards people that had that similar immigrant experience so actually a lot of my friends now um, are immigrants actually people that have had that experience as well and they're different kinds you know so different races as well I think we just really connect with the fact that our stories kind of started when we came here and then we had to you know assimilate or even work on our accents whether indirectly or someone straight up telling you to do that you know like because because then people can't say your name they can't pronounce your name so then you start to give like an English version of your name or say like you know, you know, just just call me Jay. Just call me Jay. Don't worry about calling just me call the name. Bob. Yeah, don't worry about calling Bob me the name Jay. my parents gave me. You know, <laughs> so I think being able to have that relationship and have that, um, you know, have that relationship with other immigrants, especially and a lot of my friends are Nigerian as well. It really kept me rooted. Um, I felt like I had a, like my culture here, even though I'm not in Nigeria. So that was really important for me. It was really important for me to stay close to my roots as well. And then meeting other immigrants outside of the Nigerian community, outside, uh, community outside of the African community was just so great because hearing their experiences as well, like you know, it was it was it was really really good. It's very important to do to you know get to know other people that don't look like you because you might learn a lot of things and you know you guys can support each other because you do have that shared experience at the end of the day of not being from here um so you guys can make each other you can build a home outside of your home essentially that's what it felt like to me that was my home yeah yeah i'll add a a quick follow-up so i think it really reflected in the making of this film pretty much all of our key creatives were also immigrants um in both like on set and in post so not all but a, a significant portion so I think even just in bonding and the creative process of making the film, and I think it, it, it bleeds over into what you see on screen, is that everyone is tapping into this feeling of isolation, like, you know, the small failures, like not being able to make a box of mac and cheese that feel monumental when you're trying to build a life somewhere. So I think uh, both my co-director, Anissa, who was born in Mozambique but lived in France and then came to Vancouver to do film and... I think all of us could really relate to that. Like, our cinematographer is Chinese from Mexico. Like, you know, like, we all were really, really grounded in what it is like to feel othered and to feel far away from home. And although I'm back in my hometown now, I lived in Beijing and Shanghai for five years. So the grocery store scene is actually really inspired by my first experience going to the grocery store in Beijing and not my Mandarin not being 
fluent yet and me not being able to navigate and find something to eat and I was so hungry so like a lot of that even though it's fictionalized in this world but it comes from a real place so I think that experience really allowed me to tell an authentic story.